Looking at our world from a theological perspective, this is the Theology Central Podcast, making Theology Central. Good evening, everyone. It is Tuesday, August the 24th, 2021. It is currently 5.42 p.m. Central Time, and I'm coming to you live from Victory Baptist Church located right here in Ovalo, Texas. I'm here inside the empty sanctuary, and well, we have found ourselves, uh, well, doing some investigating. We, we found ourselves becoming theological detectives, trying to find the truth, trying to find some answers, and we've had a listener being a great help. In fact, right when the last live broadcast was going off the air, they posted one more comment. It got sent to my email, and so I went and looked, and I'm like, oh, here we go. We have a, a very important link, so I have that link ready. I'm going to get you all caught up. If you missed part one, um, if you missed part one, and there, I'm getting phone calls again. Okay, here we go. Uh, I'm getting phone calls. I'm getting messages. Okay, everyone's trying to get me information is what they're trying to do. And it's like, hey, uh, don't call me when I'm on the air. See, that happened in part one. Don't call me when I'm on the air. In fact, let me give me a second here. Can I Can I turn off, let me see here, if I can turn off my uh, notifications. Let me see here. I'm looking. Uh, my messages are already off. Let's see here. FaceTime is already off. So everything should be off. I, I hope I have everything off. So we'll see. Hopefully I won't get any more calls. But if I do, I'll do my best. I apologize. This is all happening in real time. So that's what occurs. So let us let me get you all caught up. If you missed part one, go back and listen to part one. Um, if, if At some point, you'll just want to listen to it just so that you have the full context. But here's what's going on. A video was posted on YouTube by Reformation Charlotte. Reformation Charlotte. The video was posted on August the 23rd, um, August the 23rd, 2021, 2021, or yeah, 2021, and it currently has 2,791 views. Um, it has 48 thumbs up, five thumbs down, and the title of the video is this, Ordained Bethel Pastor Says God Doesn't Know the Exact Future. Now, there's a couple of things here. First, they're saying that the person who's making the claim on the video is an ordained Bethel pastor. That would be Bethel Church in Redding, California, right? Famous charismatic church, 11,000 members. A young girl dies. Instead of burying her, they're going to bring her back to life, which never occurred. And a number of other, you know, infamous or crazy happenings at Bethel Church. We, we, well, you could do an entire podcast about the crazy happenings of, at Bethel Church, but we won't go into all of them right now. So supposedly, someone who's an ador- ordained Bethel pastor says God doesn't know the exact future. Well, that is open theism. Open theism, which basically says, in a quick summary, we went into greater detail in part one, open theism is that God has left things open so that people can choose to do things and God is not in, in, in having anything to do with that. He's left it open for the possibility for people to do this or to do that. And well, there's all kinds of possibilities there that are just open. In other words, God doesn't predetermine and control everything that happens. God doesn't, so God leaves things open. He doesn't predetermine everything. He doesn't control everything. And this is the most important thing. Well, I can't say it's the most important thing. It's a very important concept when dealing with open theism. God doesn't know everything in an exhaustive way. He doesn't know everything completely. So therefore, God is not all-knowing. God is not sovereign and in control of everything that is happening. That is some of the basic tenets of open theism. So if an ordained pastor from Bethel is out there saying God doesn't know the exact future, that seems to indicate to me that's open theism. So we listened to it, but Reformation Charlotte really did a disservice to everyone. One, they did not give us the source from the video which they were they had took their clip from. They didn't give us the source. So it was impossible at you know at the beginning to try to find it. Number two, they did not give us any indication of why they're identifying the person speaking as being an ordained pastor from Bethel. They don't tell us where they got that information. They they just leave us, 
They're, they just throw out the accusation without any actual support, which is very, very, very frustrating. So I turned on the microphone and said, hey, guys, help me out. And it I, you, you didn't disappoint. Within minutes, there was someone, you know, offering me some, some uh, comments and offering some information and started helping me track some things down. So here is what we have. The name of the individual who supposedly made these claims, her name is Jenna Winston. Jenna Winston. She seems to be identified on the internet as a seer prophet. Okay. If you go to Charisma Magazine, which is the, you know, I used to, <laughs> I used to keep up with Charisma Mag- Magazine on a regular basis. Um, I would get the actual physical copy of Charisma Magazine uh, just so that I would know what was happening in the world of in the charismatic world. And finally, I was like, you know what? I, this this magazine is going to kill me because every time I would look at it, I would just lose my mind because of all of the theological issues in it. But we won't go there. So, uh, they, but on in, at charismamag.com, there is an article posted called "What This Bethel Pastor Learned When God Said." Give me your boys. Now, I'm assuming when God said, give me your boys, that they are claiming that God literally said to her, give me your boys. So I don't know, did she hear this audibly? But again, there is God speaking to her, obviously outside of scripture. But they identify her as a Bethel pastor. Now, this was published a year ago. So a lot can happen in a year. Maybe she's not associated with Bethel anymore, but it appears at one point she was. Um, it says, uh, here's here's what uh, how this article began. So I'll just give you some basic information here. Uh, with a, a, According to this article from CharismaMag.com. And again, Charisma Mag, I mean, they're right there in the heart of the whole charismatic world. So I would assume they would know if someone was associated with Bethel or not, since Bethel is like, you know, one of the most influential charismatic churches in the world. I, I would think they would know, but we'll see. Here's what how they describe it. With a background as an addict who became homeless, Bethel pastor and seer prophet Jenna Winston knows about family struggles. With her keen spiritual insights, she seeks to help keep others from going down the same destructive paths she did. She also says God showed her how many of us carry an unhealthy emotional responsibility for friends and family. We all do it, she says, and she believes it's an area where God is trying to draw us into trusting him more, all right? Winston shares the story on a recent episode of The Seer Prophet. Now, I'm assuming The Seer Prophet, uh, a recent episode of The Seer Prophet on Charisma News. So I guess Charisma News has a program or a podcast called Seer Prophet, I'm assuming. And then it goes on, and she begins to describe here. And I don't want to sit here and review the whole article. Um, yeah, the en- entire podcast, I'm like, I'm going to click on this. It's the Charisma Podcast Network. The Charisma Podcast Network. Th- yeah, through the eyes of a seer prophet, getting real with Jenna Winston. So that's her pro- uh, her podcast. Through the eyes of a seer prod- uh, th- Through the eyes of a seer prophet, getting real with Jenna Winston. Uh, it is hosted by Charisma, the Charisma Podcast Network. I bet you you can find it on the Edify Christian Podcast app. I could be wrong, uh, but I, I'm not going to go check right now. And uh, the last episode she did was uh, August the 19th, 2021, Covenant Friendships um, is the name of it. And then on August the 12th, she did one called Encountering Jesus. Have you encountered Jesus lately? I I talk with Tiffany Buller about David's tent, uh, about how David's tent started and, and the amazing things God is doing right now. Uh, then identifying your spiritual gifts, uh, the process of saying yes to God. All right, identifying your spiritual gifts. How many times a year is that preaching or teaching done in the charismatic world, identifying your spiritual gifts. Is it like, is it like every three months? Identify your spiritual gifts. Is it? it, Okay. Don't even get me started on that whole thing, but all right. um, That could be a podcast in itself. So this is the person, Jenna Winston. She is identified in a number of places as being a ordained or being connected with Bethel or identified as a Bethel pastor. 
The only problem is, and we, and we have to be very honest with this because, again, we want truth. If you go to the Bethel website, she's not listed anywhere. So I don't know how she's associated with Bethel, and, and maybe Bethel doesn't list all of their pastors. I mean, a church as big as they are, they probably have lots of, I don't know what they would be, you know, what kind of pastors they would be identified as or what their role would be. I don't know their entire church structure, but she, at least in Charisma Mag, she's identified, Charisma Magazine, she's identified as a Bethel pastor. According to Reformation Charlotte, she's she's identified as someone who's an ordained Bethel pastor. So we don't know her co- correct, we don't know for sure her association, but we think that there's at least a chance she's associated with Bethel. Now, I don't know if Bethel knows about this claims that she, the statement that she's made that clearly seems to indicate open theism, but we're going to try to get to the bottom of it. So we, that's a little bit more about the person who made the statement. Another thing we were looking for is the original source of the clip that Reformation Charlotte played, and we have found it. It comes from a YouTube video from Bowles Ministries, B-O-L-Z, Bowles Ministries. They have over 57,000 subscribers. Wow, that's, I mean, they're, they're doing, I guess from a human perspective, they're doing something right. Um, the, the name of the video is Foundations of Deliverance with Sean Bowles and Jenna Winston. It has 128 thumbs up, three thumbs down, so the majority of people like it. And we have, well, we have the, uh, we have the audio from it. I took the video, converted it to an MP3 file, uploaded it, and we're going to just work through it. And why are we doing this? Well, a couple of reasons. Number one, Reformation Charlotte played a clip from it. We played that clip from Reformation Charlotte, which clearly seems to indicate that she is saying God doesn't know our exact future. However, some of the defenders of Jenna Winston are claiming that she wasn't saying that God doesn't know our exact future. She was claiming that the enemy, that Satan doesn't know the exact future. So we're going to listen to this entire thing. We're going to, I mean, we're going to be, I'm going to be interrupting and offering commentary to see exactly how we should interpret what she should, what she said. We're going to try to find out the truth, find out if Reformation Charlotte is accurately, you know, representing the truth in their claims. We've already listened to the clip they played. My first inclination is that she was talking about God, not Satan, but I'm willing to be corrected if I need, need, need be. But we're going to listen to everything so that we have context that maybe maybe we're going to listen. I haven't even watched this yet. We're just going to see what else is said, right? Because that's only fair. That's only fair. And, and again, I stated this in part one. Let me state this in part two. Whenever people are out there making any accusation against anyone, you always want the truth, right? I, I, don't, I don't care who it is. I don't care if it's the biggest heretic in the world. I don't care if it's a priest for the church of Satan. I don't care who it is. They deserve to be fairly represented and that we are accurate and factual, right? I I don't care who they are. I don't care if it's a, I don't care if it's an, it's a, a a Muslim teacher who is calling for death on America. We still want to accurately represent them because as Christians, we have a responsibility to speak the truth. So these accusations are out there about Jenna Winston teaching open theism, we've got to identify exactly what she said and try to figure out the truth, all right? So again, I want you to know where you can go watch this for yourself. Foundations of Deliverance with Sean B-O-L-Z and Jenna Winston. Um, And this was, this video was streamed live on August the 23rd, 2021. So Reformation Charlotte grabbed this relatively quick. I mean, they... You, you, I just don't understand why they wouldn't have put a link to the original video. I, I just It doesn't make any sense to me. In their description, they get to say, to see the original video, I, I, I don't understand. But So we're going we're gonna to find out what's going on here. So are you ready? This is going to probably be crazy, but we're going to go. We're going to just jump in. We're going to see what's going to happen. Here we go. Have you ever wondered what deliverance looks like in a 
culture that we live in right now where everybody can get therapy and coaching and all kinds of ways that bring help, but not necessarily resolution or change in our inner man or inner woman. Have you looked at deliverance before in a modern way? Well, we're going to be doing that through a four-week intensive with Jenna Winston. Jenna, you're here with me right now. What are you hoping to impart and teach through this course? Um, I'm really hoping to teach people that deliverance can be as simple as exchanging a lie for the truth and go to the scriptural backing of perfect love casts out fear and actually doing deliverance with God instead of fighting the enemy. I love this because you've done thousands of appointments with people from all walks of life and have seen massive breakthrough and change in their lives just through this simple model that you're going to be teaching us on the platform. You don't want to miss this. Here we are. Well, I get it. Okay, so she's thousands of appointments with people. I guess bringing some kind of deliverance to their life. Now, again, those of you who are familiar with the charismatic world, these, this language is probably very common to you. Deliverance, deliverance, deliverance. I know, I mean, again, I don't even claim to be an expert in charismatic theology. Look, here's the thing. I, when I decided to pursue a, an, an additional degree in Catholicism, because I went, when I spoke about Catholicism, I wanted to ensure that I could do so from a position of knowledge and not a position of ignorance. I, even though I want to speak about Catholic, or, uh, charismatic theology sometimes, I have never been <laughs> willing to go pursue a degree in charismatic theology because I don't think I could have been able to handle it without just having a complete and utter nervous breakdown. That's how much charismatic theology bothers me. I could handle learning Catholic theology far better than I could ever handle learning charismatic theology. That is how much I just, it drives me, it just, it makes me angry. And again, a part of the reasons is watching charismatics make their claims about healing and then watching people die in the medical world that I worked in for 22 years and never seeing the charismatics there to pick up the pieces of the people whose loved one died and wasn't healed, even though they were promised all of this nonsense by charismatic liars. So yeah, I don't even, so I, yeah, I get, I, my blood pressure gets up. So this deliverance talk, though, in the times of listening to charismatic teaching, it's pretty common. Deliverance, deliverance, deliverance. It's, I mean, you got to be delivered from pretty much anything and every, everything. Anything can have you in bondage. You can be the demon of anything, and you need deliverance. You need deliverance. So the deliverance and breakthrough, these are like common words used in the charismatic world. Um, and there's, of course, an entire doctrine behind their understanding of deliverance and, and everything. We'll we'll see if we have to get into any of this as this goes forward. But let let's let's see if she gets a, a, a introduced here as a Bethel pastor. I have a time to talk to Jenna with you guys, so you guys can hear from her. And I just wanted to have a time live where I go on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube's the YouTube's and talk to you guys about right now in society. There's spiritual roots that we have to uproot so we can live a different life, so we can live that quality John ten ten life. And we can't do that unless we have the tools. And we need the tools from people who are experienced and experts and don't give the enemy ground, but give God ground. So much deliverance is so shady out there. And I love Jenna Winston because she brings just the best of who Jesus is with biblical approach and a spiritual approach through her prophetic gift, which is just so phenomenal. And she's going to activate you whether you need breakthrough, whether you're in the midst of a season where you're looking back at life and you're really praying through it, whether you want to bring breakthrough and deliverance to others. This is going to be a great intro course, or it's going to be a great refresher course for you guys. So I'm going to read a little bit. Okay, before we listen to anything else, we heard the word breakthrough. See, you can almost do, I know Chris Rosebro for Fighting on the Faith does it. I think he calls it, you know, a, a, a charismatic bingo or whatever, where he has a bingo card. And when, whenever he's reviewing charismatic sermons, then you try to find all who, who can find out all the words that you know they're going to say first. Well, breakthrough is there, but I just want you to know that the claim is that her, what she does, her understanding is biblical, that they're, they're making a claim about her biblical understanding. She's biblical. She understands this. She's in a sense, an expert on all of this. So therefore, she has to be held to the standard of being biblical. Now, when you get to the doctrine of God, 
I'm sorry. I'm going to hold you to the standard of, of making sure you give me the biblical God. If you go into the direction of open theism, you've just, dis- not only have you destroyed the biblical God, I, in my estimation, you've destroyed anything, any, why would you associate, a, why would you want a God who doesn't know the future, isn't control of everything? Wh- I mean, I want a God who doesn't know everything, doesn't control everything. I, yeah, that's that's the God I want. That, that seems like a God that's not going to be very helpful or useful, right? He doesn't. And how can that God make prophecy if he doesn't know everything and he doesn't control everything? I mean, what? I mean, there's so many questions, so many questions. But we're going to see if that's what she actually claims. But again, they they are making the claim of her expertise. They're making a claim of how biblical she's going to be. I'm not. They are. So now all I'm going to do is say, okay, that's the claim. Let's hold you to it. There you go. All right. That, that, that's, that's fair. Like if I, if I was to come on and, and, and make claims about that, I am the greatest communicator you've ever heard. I say every name, right? I never mess up subject verb agreement. I make sure that I always speak in the right tense that I, well, then you would hold me to it. And if you listen to me on a regular basis, you know, I make lots of mistakes in those areas, right? We all know that. Okay. No, it, it's perfectly okay. You, 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 you can, you can, you can agree. All right. So we all know that I'm not making the claim to be an expert in those areas. If you claim to have a certain knowledge and a certain expertise, well, then you're going to be held to it. And if you're claiming that you're the biblical one, you're the biblical one, then, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to hold you to it. It's, it's that simple. All right. So now she could come on here in a minute and say, no, 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 don't say that I'm the expert. Don't say I'm biblical. She could say that. But of course, every Christian thinks they're biblical. Every pastor thinks they're biblical. Every church thinks they're biblical. So, you know, that that's pretty common ground. But let's 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 continue. Uh, Jenna, then I'm going to bring her on. Welcome to everybody who's joining. I can see you guys are coming from all over the place. This is awesome. We have people from Colombia and Canada. And of course, we have uh, South Africa. We've had you guys. Yes, that's every time we go live with our, our South Africans in Texas and Cornwall. And I'm going to encourage you guys, Belize, this is awesome. I want to encourage you guys, this class is for anybody in the world, anywhere in the world. And there's going to be live components, video components. So most of it, you could do at your own pace, but there is a once a week live. And if you miss the live, the good thing is it will be recorded and put into the class. So you'll still be able to interact. But Jenna is going to do uh, some interactives where she's going to answer questions. She's going to be praying for you. It's going to be really good. So you're going to really enjoy this. So let me tell you about Jenna. I wanted to say hi to everybody as we go. And Jenna, someone from writing. Yes, that's where Jenna lived last, but now lives in Los Angeles here. Okay. So. All right. Now we get our first clue. She no longer, she lived in Reading. Well, that would be, that would possibly explain a possible connection to Bethel, but now she lives in Los Angeles. Now, for the experts out there on Bethel, does Bethel have like a, a, a satellite campus or something in Los Angeles? Is there a Bethel Church Los Angeles that's associated or connected with the Bethel Church in Reading? So maybe she was ordained by Bethel, and then left Bethel, and now she's in uh, Los Angeles. So maybe Reformation Charlotte, again, you've got to explain yourself. You, hey, an ordained pastor from Bethel. That makes me think that she's still associated with Bethel. She may have already moved on and have nothing to do with Bethel anymore. So, I mean, we, we want to be accurate here. We want to be accurate here. But now we know she does not live in Reading. She lives in Los Angeles. So that at least disconnects her from, from uh, Bethel Church, Redding, California, as far as the actual physical church in Redding, California. She's, at, or, or, yeah, she's now in Los Angeles. Okay, I think I said that correct. She's not, she would not, she no longer lives in Redding, so she moved to Los Angeles. Is, how far is Redding from Los Angeles? Is it, how close? I don't know, I'd have to look. So maybe, maybe she still could be connected, but I, I, I think if she lives in Los Angeles, I doubt she's driving, going to Redding to attend church. So I, I think that would indicate she's no longer connected to the physical location of Bethel Church in Redding, California. I, I think that's fair. Uh, again, we're just trying to be fair and, and, and listen to all the information that we can got, gather. Jenna, I'm getting your bio up and then I'm going to bring you on. Jenna does sessions uh, specializing in inner healing, prophetic deliverance, identifying, and cultivating your spiritual gifts and restoring your full identity. She's done this for over seven years with people from all walks of life here in Hollywood, 
people who are business people, people who are ministers, people who are in crisis, people who are just in their journey and they just need help. She's done this in so many different ways. And she's not concerned about behaviors, but wants to get the root of the behavior. She has had so many people who've tried many counselors in her healing sessions and medication who feel hopeless because they have no lasting breakthrough. But God's given her a gift to see what lies uh, what lies people are believing and how to dismantle those to bring true lasting freedom and breakthrough. And she's going to teach you to do the same thing as well, whether it's panic attacks, anxiety, fears, guilt, shame, self-rejection, behavioral disorders, anything else keeping you or the people you love from you know, wholeness. She's going to help you. She's going to help you identify things, learn things. and even. Okay. So if you're having panic attacks, I guess you don't need a doctor. You need Jenna Winston. And she can see the lies, I guess, behind what's causing these behavioral issues. So if you have behavioral issues, you go to Jenna, she can see the lie, and then will help you del be delivered from the lie, which then will eliminate the behavioral issue. Oh, there's a lot going on here. Now, we did get an email uh, from a listener who, who that gave me a link here, and I don't have time to, to pull this one up right now. But it says, in this six-minute video, they claim she is a pastor at Bethel, and this shows that she claims Jesus played with her hair. But the question remains, where are they getting the idea that she's a pastor at Bethel, all right? Um, she, she's still looking for that. Sounds like from this video, she was ordained by Bethel. Not sure that means she is still there, though. So now this was sent at 543. It's now 608. So uh, the email's a little behind. So I think the video that we're now currently listening to demonstrates that at one point she lived in Redding, California. That would have possibly explained her association. Now she lives in Los Angeles. Again, I don't know the distant distance between Redding and Los Angeles, but I would think this means she's no longer associated with Bethel Church in Redding. Now, is she still associated with Bethel? I don't know. Was she ordained by them? I don't know. He's giving her bio, but they're not giving us her where, like, so where would you, did she go to school? Did she go to Bethel School of Ministry? Does she, did, is that where, let's see if they give a, any more background. Like they're giving her bio. I want to know, like, maybe this will give us some connection to Bethel here. Even in this four weeks, you're going to go so far on the journey of understanding how to bring breakthrough or receive breakthrough yourself. So Jenna, come on uh, into the, the live here. It's so cool to have you. Hi, how is everyone? People from all over the world who, who are coming on to say hi. I love this it. Awesome. Well, Absolutely. tell us about just kind of your style and what you're hoping to bring in the next four weeks besides what I've said. Yeah. I really, really, really believe deliverance partnered with God and it got off course with religion. It really, really, really got off course where everything became about dissecting the enemy, identifying yeah. every demon, identifying every curse, finding out if your grandma was a witch, you know, like everything you could possibly, <laughs> you know, oh, and Somehow religion twisted it where everything to get free became about fighting the enemy. And I yeah. know this is a really a Okay, now this this is typical language in a lot of evangelical world and oh, definitely in some charismatic world. It's like, okay, there like religion did all the wrong stuff. Religion messed everything up, but you know, and they almost want to separate Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is not a religion, and I get so bothered. When people try to play that little game, Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is a relationship. That sounds so spiritual and preaches so good, but by any reasonable identifier, Christianity is a religion. We believe in a deity. We have a religious text that is supposedly authoritative, the Bible. We make religious claims. We have religious actions and ceremonies. I mean, I mean, come on, we meet the definition of a religion. So I hate when they try to play that game. Like religion messed everything up. Religion messed everything up. And sometimes what comes along with that, not always, but sometimes what comes along with this mentality is, oh, you care about all of that theology and doctrine and churches. That's all religion. I worry, all I care about is a relationship. And that sounds so good. The only problem is when you throw out all of that doctrine and all of that theology and all of that church history, you've just plowed up the ground that's now perfectly ready for, for heresy and false doctrine to be planted, right? I've always said ignorance of scripture, all right, is the soil in which deception is planted. Ignorance of theology, doctrine, and church history is also the soil in which deception is planted. And so a lot of people associate systematic theology, 
hermeneutics, all of those kinds of things with religion. But relationship is just about loving Jesus and him loving me and deliverance and, and experience and all of those kinds of things. Like we don't want to, and I, and, I, and I know this because I've had people walk through the front door of my church and say, it, it, it feels like a seminary. It feels like a, I don't, you know, I want it to feel like church and they're wanting something far exper- more experiential, not quote unquote more academic. And I understand that maybe we are too academic, but let me tell you, you focus on experience you end up usually then denying doctrine and theology, and you end up in many cases embracing heresy. So, I mean, we could have a long philosophical discussion about my approach versus everyone else's approach. And I understand my approach is not for everyone, but I just I just don't like that religion, 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 reli- religion did it. Religion did it all wrong. But dun da dun da da Jenna Winston is here to save us from religion. She's got it all figured out. Religion basically keeps you in bondage, but Jenna Winston dun, 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 can bring you deliverance. Now, you can make an appointment with her, it appears. It would be interesting to know how much does she charge for one of these deliverance sessions? Does she do it absolutely free or does she charge? That would be that would be a very interesting thing to figure out. I don't know if we can find that out. I don't know. Now, um, one of the emails I got also says... Um, that this article, I was I read the first part of this article, but this article possibly indicates her in Reading and at their their school of ministry, whatever their school is called. Um, and so again, we don't have any definitive connections yet, but we have a lot of uh, we have a lot of circumstantial evidence. I still I, I was hoping that here they would they would associate her with Bethel. I mean, she was in Reading. I mean, that's so close to just saying it. And then she moved to Los Angeles. Yes, no. Was she ordained by Bethel? If she was ordained by Bethel, obviously she's no longer there. So there can be theological change, but Bethel could say, hey, wait a minute, we ordained you and we did not ordain you to believe in open theism or is open theism acceptable under the Bethel theological system? Maybe they don't teach it, but they are not opposed to it. Well, that that would be, I mean, if you're not opposed to it, you, you're accepting it. So, all right, let, let's continue statement but I always say it's kind of like making out with Satan trying to get close to God it's Mm -hmm. literally you're so obsessed with the enemy you're so dissecting and I'm a firm believer the enemy doesn't care if your attention on him is good or bad as long as it's not on God and so so when you realize like if you just took the simple picture that you're standing there and you're facing every demon on the in the world right if you just turn around and Jesus is there you can't see them anymore right (laughs) so You can't see him anymore. And so when you, true deliverance is about, there are so many things that happen in our lives all the time that God never planned. Okay, there's the first one. There's no question there who she's talking about. There are things happen all the time in our lives that God didn't plan. God didn't plan. So you have a God who therefore is not sovereign, not in control. God didn't plan it. So you name whatever happened to you. God didn't plan that. Now, I understand from a philosophical standpoint, let me make it very clear. I understand from a philosophical standpoint why you would want to believe that because it it gets God off the hook for all of the bad things that happen. You don't want to say God planned that bad thing to happen. God planned. No, 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 no. You got you got to you got to you got you to in, in a sense we want to be able to wash God's hands from it. I'm no in, in a metaphorical sense. You, you you understand in an illustrative sense, allegorical sense. You know what I'm saying? That uh he, he that he's washing his hands. He didn't plan that. So for example, God didn't plan the fall. No, 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 no. He didn't plan it. It just happened. He didn't plan it. Uh, and you can go on and God didn't plan this. He didn't plan this. He didn't plan this. He didn't plan this. Well, after a while, you start realizing if God didn't plan every bad thing that's ever happened, God didn't plan, then God is literally not in control. Now, if he didn't plan it, he's not in control. Then all you got to do is add the third part. He doesn't know. And dun, 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 dun you're straight up open theist. You, be- you, you believe in open theism. And at that point, you're straight up a heretic. You no longer hold a historical biblical Christianity. The end, done. Now, again, I cannot associate this with Bethel yet because we're still, there's some questions we don't have answers to, 
but I can definitely associate it with her, okay? Because she just said that things happened that God didn't plan. All right, now, remember, there's, there's this weird transition that's going to happen here where everyone's interpreting it differently. And if you're listening live, please give me your fair interpretation of what we're about to hear because she's going to make a statement where people are, where I think she's saying, or at least I thought initially, that she's saying that God doesn't know um, our exact future. And other people are saying that she's not talking about God. She's talking about Satan. Okay, so now, but she's already established that God doesn't, pl- uh, that things happen that God doesn't plan, right? So if things happen that God didn't plan, then the question would be, well, God, did God know that was going to happen? Now, because see, here's the thing. If, 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 well, now, see, we can just walk this back, and I think we're, you, she has to be saying God doesn't know, because that's the only thing that's going to make sense. Let me explain. So, let's say I, I get ready to walk out of the door here in, uh, in, of the church, and about, you know, whenever I get done this evening, all right, I walk out, and someone pulls up, pulls out a gun, shoots me three times, boom, 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 and you say, well, God did not plan that. Okay, well, if God didn't plan it, did he know it? If you say, well, God knew it, but he didn't plan it. Well, if he knew it and didn't stop it, well, then clearly he had to plan it because he knew it was going to happen before I existed. He did nothing to stop it from happening. Therefore, you would have to say it's a part of his plan because he knew it and didn't stop it. Or unless, or you almost have to then be pushed into a corner to say he didn't know it. If, God did, if things happen that God didn't plan, you can't say he knew they were going to happen. You, you, you run into a, a major issue here, just from a philosophical standpoint. So let, let's see what else she says here. God doesn't make bad things happen, but he will take the assaults from the enemy who the, he doesn't want us happy and full of life and walking in our identity. And we're all gifted. We're yeah. all called. We all have epic, you know, whatever. And so he doesn't know our exact future, but he does know our callings. He does know our giftings. And he's just going to hit you opposite all the time, you know, and we get stuck in blame and this and that and believing all of it to where we don't even know our identity. Okay. Now that, now that I'm, now I'm hearing that, see, uh, one of the things Reformation Charlotte did wrong was they, they kept stopping it. They kept stopping it. And then they kept messing with the, 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 you know, the sound, they slowed it way down the speed of it. All right. That does sound like, let's be fair, that she is saying the enemy doesn't know our exact future. Right. In fact, let's back that up. All right. So that sounds like that what she is saying here. See, this is the reason we do this kind of stuff, because I hate I, I hate. And, and this is just a, a very important lesson we're learning here. I don't care who the ministry is, no matter how much you trust them. If they start accusing someone of something, you've got to go verify. All right. So we're going to back this up a little bit more. Because she says he doesn't know our exact future. And then he uh, uh, he may, I think she says he knows our calling, et cetera, et cetera. And then he hits us with the opposite. Well, that would have to be Satan. That would have to be Satan. So I think that that's, I think that, I think we're getting somewhere here. All right. Let's see if I can back this up just a little bit more. All right, here we go. So he doesn't know our exact future, but he does know our callings. He does know our giftings. And he's just going to hit you opposite all the time, you know? And we get stuck in, Blame and this and that and believing. See, he's hitting you the opposite. That's got to be referring to the enemy. So Satan doesn't know our exact future. Satan doesn't know our exact future. So that that part, so she's not preaching open theism there. She's preaching open theism saying that things happen in our lives that God didn't plan. That's leaving it open. So there's an aspect of open theism, but she doesn't add the other part. All right, so I I think the defenders of her are at least somewhat accurate here. And Reformation Charlotte, they they clearly, the way they kept playing that clip, they definitely are associating what she's saying with God. And I think they got it. I think they got it wrong here. I, I think I think they got it wrong. Let, let's listen to it again. So he doesn't know our exact future, but he does know our callings. He does know our giftings. And he's just going to hit you opposite all the time, you know? And we get stuck in blame and this and that and believing all of it to where we don't even know our identity, right? So what does it look like instead of dissecting everything wrong with you? You know, all the time I'll people walk in my office, you know, I'm addicted to pornography, I'm this, I'm an addict, I'm this, I'm that, I'm like, I don't care about your behaviors. Let's get to the reasons why you ended up there, right? And going to the root, because when you get to the root of wherever that... Okay, now, 
All right. Now, we, 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 may, be, <laughs> we may be able to get past some of the open theism, but we got to be very careful what she just said. I don't care about your behavior. I care about the root. Well, what root are you going to find? Because the root would be your depraved nature, correct? Maybe we're going to find other issues here than the open theism. Reformation Charlotte focused on the one thing. See, this is the this is why they should you should never take things out of context. We got to let the person speak for themselves. So I don't care about your behavior. You may be addicted to porn. I'm not worried about your uh, behavior that that is a part of your addiction to porn. I care about the root. Well, the root would not that be your sinful nature. Now I'm not saying there may, may not be some other issues connected with it, but. You can't leave out the sinful nature, right? I mean, if you ignore that, you're kind of, you know, well, you're, well, I wonder, are you going to go semi-Pelagian here? Maybe, maybe it's not open theism. Maybe we're looking for semi-Pelagianism. I don't know. Let's continue. First partnership with is, which is where, where my prophetic gifting comes in, is because the Lord shows me um, um, where first things happen. And I'll literally just be like, going in and finding out what that root was, ripping it out and really bringing the truth of what God meant for it to be at the time. And then whatever behavior and self-protection that has gone on since then falls off on its own. You don't even have to talk to the d- demonic, you know? And it's like That's this. so cool. Yeah. I know that the deliverance I received was very much like a power trip and, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and um, I mean, I got free, you can get free, but there's something about when you do it with Jesus, with finding out the truth and the focus becomes going into the truth versus I'm going to bind and cast and burn and send to cold places yeah. or dry well, places. It's, it's interesting too, because when you look at protesting nowadays versus there's people who have more of an occupational mindset that says we have to become what we're protest against yeah. the opposite of what we're, you know, we're right. believing for. We have to become what we're believing for so that the opposite manifests in society, whether it's over racism or whether it's, you know, over, a political issue, whatever it is, it's like, let's become the right thing. And that displaces the need to protest and not that protesting is bad, but sometimes protesting becomes louder than manifesting. Right. And And I feel it's the same with deliverance. Sometimes the, the, the fight against the enemy and the the very visible, like come up to judgment, you demon becomes bigger than what's God doing. Where's Jesus? How can you see what he's doing? And I've, I've seen you pray for people. And one of the things I've loved is one of the girls you were praying for. And I was just kind of watching you, you, had a prophetic moment with her, which you, you in part, you help activate people in these moments to be able to do this. And she, you had this prophetic moment with her and she saw something she'd never seen about Jesus. Mm -hmm. And the look on her face, it was like, Mm -hmm. she had drank a thousand gallons of God where she only (laughs) ever had a little bit of the enemy. You know, it's like, she just had so much that it just became like the victory is already there, girl. That's like, it's done now. Like I'm, I had so much hope for her and it was a pretty hopeless, you know, situation. So I had so much hope for her in that moment. And I feel like that's that's the difference. The secret sauce of deliverance mm-hmm. is the way that you you activate the the, the identity or the connection to Jesus right. and right. That his original intention over people. And I think that that's a lost art amongst many people yeah. who do deliverance because they come with 25 pages to renounce, which isn't wrong. We need to renounce things at times. Yes, absolutely. But they come up with 25 pages of everything I can do. It's almost like I'm going to work myself into this. Right. Anything I've done, I'm going to come out of agreement right now. And that's what's going to get God to say, you're worthy for me to inhabit. And the yeah. demons will go away versus... Actually, God already calls you worthy and he just wants you to line up now. Yeah. And it's not because of the works you've done. It's because of the work he did on the cross. Absolutely. So that's a big battle right there, even yeah. in the deliverance community of like, yeah. some people feel like they need the show to feel like it's a real deliverance, you know? I I literally did a session with someone that was doing that kind of deliverance and had actually gotten in bondage on that kind of deliverance, meaning wow. they were in literal fear that if they didn't read the paper, absolutely perfect on everything that they were supposed to renounce and everything that they were supposed to break off that the person wouldn't get free. I go, Oh, so you're basically doing deliverance, serving your paper, you know? And so it becomes like yeah, that a but formula. The, it's a, a yeah, religious yeah. formula. It's always got to be Holy Spirit. And so I get asked all the time, Jenna, what does a session look like with you? I go, they're never the same, ever. (laughs) It's going to be, I'm going to connect to Holy Spirit, not read a piece of paper. And we're going to go after whatever God is doing with you right now in this moment. And the truth is, is that God sees us in our entirety from while when we were formed through eternity, right? And we get stuck in our, whatever our circumstances right now. And the fact, all right, now, see, saying that God sees us from basically when we're formed to eternity would seem to indicate that God knows everything. Now, once again, if God knows everything and then something happens, 
and he didn't stop it. Are you saying he didn't plan it? So, so now you're kind of walking yourself into a, a weird theological question. He, he, he sees everything, but he doesn't plan everything. Well, then if he, if he saw it and didn't do anything about it to stop it, wouldn't it have to be a part of his plan? Because if it wasn't a part of his plan, wouldn't he have stopped it? And if he didn't stop it, wouldn't it be because it was a part of his plan? Like if he doesn't stop it, that's the plan. That, 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 that gets into a lot of, 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 of questions. But that kind of possibly another indicator that the, the part, the clip that Reformation Charlotte ripped out of its context that seemingly indicated that she was saying God doesn't know our exact future. I think, to be fair, now that we now that we really hear it, um, and and this audio clip, to it, well, at least on my speakers, is of greater quality than the one that Reformation Charlotte was using. Um, so this one, I think, it, it makes it very clear that that's not what she was saying. But she said that things happen in our lives that God didn't plan, which is still a part of open theism. So this is kind of like. Yes, there's some open theism here, but it's not as clear as Reformation Charlotte tried to make it appear, right? But I mean, Reformation Charlotte, they made the video, they got to live with it. That's the problem when you make an accusation with someone and you have about a minute, 40 second video where you take about 20 seconds of someone's statement, 30 seconds of someone's statement, and you rip it out of context. That's not right. That's not fair. I mean, look, we all make mistakes. So Reformation Charlotte, hopefully we'll just fix it and it'll and, and, and move on and, and, and do better in the future. Like I have to correct my mistakes and do better and move on in, in the future. It's all we can do is get back up after we fall down. But um, this whole deliverance thing, though, is very, yeah, this whole thing is so basically you go to her, she connects to the Holy Spirit. And then the Holy Spirit tells her what's going on inside of you that explains your bad behavior. So here's your behavior, your issues, whatever. She connects to the Holy Spirit, dun, 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 dun. She gets the insight. She tells you this is the issue. And then boom, you experience deliverance and you experience freedom. So I guess technically, I mean, at least theoretically, if I go to her for every bad behavior, every sinful behavior, I guess if I go to her enough, sooner or later, I'll understand everything that's causing me to do sin, sin. And I guess at some point, theoretically, I could stop sinning, right? Now, I don't know how, again, maybe she does this for free. Maybe these sessions with her are free. I hope they are. I would hate that people are paying money for them, but um, that I don't know. There's a lot of things we don't know yet about this entire situation. Is, is that, um, the one thing I want to put in here that I feel like is such a form of deliverance that really changed my need to constantly be fixing all the time was I remember um, it was when I got ordained as a pastor by Bill and Chris. And I was like, how did this happen? How does this girl come out? Okay, wait a minute. She got ordained as a pastor by Bill and Chris. All right, now here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Let's go back to Bethel Church. Is that Bill Johnson? Is that Bill Johnson? Let's see, Bethel Church, Redding, California. I mean, let me go to their website. Okay, I'm going to Bethel Church's website. So it, it sounds like she was. Uh, let's see here, leadership. Here's our leadership team. All right, that's Bill. So Bill would possibly be Bill Johnson. Chris could be uh, Chris Volatin, V-A-L-L-O-T-T-O-N. So that may give us a, her connection to Bethel. She was ordained by Bill and Chris. There is a Bill Johnson, which everyone knows, obviously, and uh, Chris Volatin. And Chris Volatin, uh, uh, Chris and his wife, Kathy, are the senior associate leaders at Bethel Church. So uh, they would, it would make perfect sense that she would have been ordained by them. Now, she doesn't say Bethel, but that's getting me at least closer to that. Now, she's already then said that God, things happen in our lives that God didn't plan. She did not say, for clarification, I don't think she is saying that God doesn't know our exact future. I think she's saying the enemy doesn't know our exact future, but he does know our calling, et cetera, et cetera. And then he hits us with the opposite. That seems to be the full quote. All right. However, she's saying some, uh, she's also going on to say that God knows basically us from the beginning to eternity, but then things can happen in your life that God didn't plan, but then 
if God and if God knows everything, well, you, you see, you th- this is still a theological mess. It's still a theological mess here. And it seems to be giving the indication that if you go to her, she can figure out why you're doing bad things and she can make it stop because she can connect to the Holy Spirit in a way that obviously you can't. I guess, I mean, maybe. I mean, why would you have to go to her if you could do the same thing? I guess you have to be taught to do the same thing. Then you can do the same thing, uh, maybe. How to rehab and end up, you know, you know, how does this happen? And I was having this moment with God and he kind of showed me in the spirit, this wall of accolades of like all the great things I had done. And then he showed me back in like withdrawal and addiction and pain, all the old past stuff. And I hated her. I didn't even want to look at her. And so Jesus has kind of t- taken my head back and forth between the two. And I'm so my human understanding is that he's going to be like, oh, look how far you've come, you know. But what did yeah. he say? But what did he say? With every epic, wonderful accomplishment you've had, I do not love you more than I did when you were her. <laughs> now, please note, that's supposedly a direct quote from God. That quote is not found in your Bible. It's not found in my found in my Bible. It's not found in any Bible. Therefore, she is getting extra biblical revelation of God revealing something specifically about Him and her relationship and His relationship with her and her relationship with Him. So there's the extra biblical, charismatic stuff. All right. So just so that we know what's going on there. And when He said that to me, oh my. my God. To constantly fix and control and manage and not mess up changed. And all of a sudden, my ability to realize that his love for us is so massive, the only thing that has to change is our ability to receive it. So I feel like what I do is help remove the lies that's keeping you from being able to receive it so that you can stop it. So, well, we have some questions from some people who are Mm -hmm. asking. I love everything you're saying. Like, what's the difference between what you're teaching and Sozo? Um, I actually used to work at the Transformation Center. I worked with Donna. She was the first person that brought me on staff. I Sozo works. It's amazing. Um, the only difference is is that Sozo is kind of like a blanket formula. It, I, I'm not. I don't want to call it a formula. That sounds so bad. But it's it's literally it's a model. It's a model. It's they call a model, it a model. And it covers everything. Um, I just my gifts just work different. It's just yeah. the way that God has gifted me and the way that I see things. And even though like I see naked eye in the spirit, honestly, 90% of what happens in a session has nothing to do with what I see with my eyes. It's because of what the Lord shows me prophetically. So I couldn't follow like a model if I wanted to. And yeah. so that's why when Donna brought me on staff, I'm I was doing school, so I was the prophetic deliverance yeah. pastor. So I think models are are really good for people who need the structure of them. And I think they work really well. Like Thea Fostick, I have a friend who's a Thea yeah. Fostick inner healer she does so good so so inner healing like they are so valuable but then there's people who have a gift and maybe some of you are watching or this person you have a gift and you're like no model has been able to define what i do and that's good because jenna's not trying to give us a model she's trying to activate you in faith to be able to to really see jesus and really be able to apprehend and, and connect to your gifts in the moment of praying for people and also for yourself so it's not just about like i'm gonna pray this just so that you know, the reason I didn't jump in and all of that, they're naming some of these deliverance models and things that I am not familiar with. So I'm not going to jump in and say, oh, that's that, that's that again, because I, I mean, I, I, you literally could d- d- dedicate three, four hours a day just listening and keeping up with what's going on in the world of charis- the charismatic world and then trying to talk about it. I, I have not dedicated my, myself that much to the charismatic movement because I'm so opposed to it that it would just literally drive me crazy and take any life out of me of trying to do anything. I feel productive. Now, when when situations arise, I got no problem digging in and learning as much as I can so that I can address it. But if there's ever a charismatic issue that you want me to address, I will do my best to try to speak as authoritative and as informed as I can about it. But I will be very upfront when I just like I don't I don't know some of these models that they're talking about, these deliverance models. I'm not familiar with them, never heard of them. I don't even know what a deliverance model is. I mean, my I mean, like like what yeah, I mean, I've got I've got a million questions about a lot of these things, but let's continue. You know, 50 steps against masonry in my family, but it's actually like right. looking at Jesus right now, not just in the context of Sozo, where was Jesus in that experience, but having a prophetic moment with yeah. God that can define everything. So, and yeah. again, Sozo can do that at the same time. There's great yeah. models who also do that. We're not talking about a model though. We're talking about training to walk in your relationship with God into deliverance and breakthrough, which I think is super valuable. I think there's room right. for all of these expressions. But my, me personally, one of the reasons why I asked you, Jenna, is because 
I really like the fact that there's probably a lot of people who connect to our community. A lot of people are on our platform who aren't the model followers. Right. I mean, maybe the model defined or helped them for a couple of years, but now they're looking mm -hmm. for new tools. We're giving new yeah. tools, which is good. Of course. There's a lot of people who are really responding, saying they really love what you're saying and they're really impacted by this and they're, they're really excited about being a part of it, which I, I just That's think it's cool. going to be really profound. There's, I think some of you who maybe have never experienced God's love this way, um, to give it to people this way or to receive it, or you don't see yourself as prophetic, but your empathy or your compassion's out of control. And you're, you'll realize this is the prophetic in you. This is like, God's going to show you how to speak. Maybe you're not a naked eye seer as Jenna has coined, which means you see open visions. I'm not, I, I, see, I have seen open visions, but it's not my primary way. Maybe it's more of impressions inside. That doesn't matter. Jenna won't get caught up in her. All right. So now God speaks directly and now they have open visions. All right. So now this is just, this is just full blown, crazy, charismatic world that I have all kinds of issues with and I reject outright 1000%. I believe it's heretical, wrong. And I, I mean, right there is, is, is gone. The issue is we have, we think we've at least established some connection with Bethel. Now, some of this stuff that she's talking about, Bethel would fully embrace God speaking to them, open visions, all of that's just straight Bethel. There's no issue with that. The open theism that we heard at least implied that uh, there's, there's a part of open theism there. God, things happen in your life that God doesn't plan. All right, that, that question. But then let's make it, again, I just, I'm gonna continue to stress this. She doesn't say God doesn't know our exact future. She does not say that. She's referring to the enemy, all right? And I am so thankful that, that, uh, that we went back and that we did this. I'm so thankful that we did this. That's why we had to go back and get the full context and put it all together. Uh, I, again, Re uh, Reformation Charlotte, the way they, 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 they so led you to hear, they, basically they gave you that impression before you even heard it. And when I first heard it, I, that, I heard it the way they gave the impression and that's on me. That was, you know, I was slapped myself in the head. I should have caught it the first time, but I didn't catch it the first time. I, in fact, I may pull up, here's what I'll do. I'll pull up um, here in a minute. I'm going to pull up the original that played by Reformation Charlotte and, and show you what they did with it. And, and we'll see if, if why, I'll try to ad identify live on the air why I missed it originally. Let, let's continue. Style she's going to be imparting and activating to each of us and to the whole class, what it looks like to walk in, you know, really replacing these lives with the truth of yeah. who Jesus is. And people are going to walk in freedom. You're going to get some freedom. I know I get freedom when I'm around you, Jenna, all the time. I know our <laughs> friendship circle, like just people, there's before and after Jenna Winston for sure in everyone's <laughs> yeah. life, which is so cool. <laughs> well, tell me, uh, tell me a recent time if you can, or maybe not a recent time, because I know you have confidentiality, but something that you're allowed to tell, like a deliverance session you're allowed to talk about. Tell okay. me, kind of walk us through something that was really impacted you the way that God came. Oh, Okay. I also love to shatter the box that deliverance looks pure and holy. I'm not going to lie because God is going to free you based on how you are going to receive. Okay. Yeah. So I, I did the, uh, I was meeting with this person, knew nothing of where they had been. But once, once I saw them in the spiritual, I was like, Oh my, like, uh, this is crazy. Right. And Sometimes shock value pulls people into. <laughs> yeah. So I remember this person because this is this one was actually in person, which most of my stuff is on over, online. But um, I do ninety nine percent of my sessions on Zoom. But this one was in person, and he literally sat in front of me and just kept going. I'm the worst piece of. I'm the worst piece. You know, he just wouldn't stop. He's just walking, yeah. and I'm like, okay, Lord, because there's a difference between victim and. Okay, did the... Oh, we cut out a little bit. I'm not sure okay, if hang I on. cut right. out or Jenna cut They cut out. out. I thought we cut guys out. Will be... I'm like, wait, we, go. Oh, oh, we, we, lost we never have we lost problems. For just a second. There's a difference between... Um, cut out. You know, someone just, well, there's something wrong with me, I'm bad. And somebody who's like literally in bondage, right? And so I remember I couldn't, it was, it was Holy Spirit. I couldn't believe it came out of my mouth. I go, well, you know what? If that's what you're going to do is just can sit here and tell me everything that's wrong with you, then fine. I'll just sit and listen. I'll take your money. You can go. Right. And I have never, ever been in it for the financial area. So the I'll take your money. All right. So she has to charge. She has to charge. Okay. Now this is where I'm going to start getting really upset. Okay. If you have the power 
to free people from bondage and you're taking money. Okay. I, I, <laughs> Oh, I got it because that would be a ministry, right? That, your ministry is to set people free from bondage and they've got to pay you to get set free. Okay. Now I'm about to get upset. I'm trying to find if there's a website where I can, I can find out where, if I can find out like how, cause I want to, I want to go through the process and try to sign up and, and see if, you know, she can deliver me from, uh, you know, who knows what, um, there's not, if anyone can find her website, um, I want to know where it, I really do because I want to know, uh, oh wait, hang on. Okay, here we go. All right. Here's the store. Okay. So I, I, I think maybe I found it. Identifying and cultivating your spiritual gifts. Whoa. Okay. This, okay. Now, okay. Now, 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 now. Okay. Now Reformation Charlotte at least put us onto this, but now, okay. So I give them credit for that. Now they didn't represent everything uh, carefully, but when we start digging into this, this is starting to get very frustrating now. Okay. Here we go. Uh, so Jenna Winston, here we go. I'm making sure this is her. That looks like her. Um, I'm making, I'm making sure I've got everything correct. Um, that, yeah, that, that's her. That has to be her. All right. So identify and cultivating your spiritual gifts. Uh, this it's, it's a course, a live training and will draw and it will cost you $299. It was originally $400. So it's on sale. So you can get live training for $299 to identify your spiritual gifts. So you can identify your spiritual gifts, I guess, without Jenna Winston. I, I, I don't know. And you're going to charge someone $300? Man, I am in the wrong line of work. I'm going to, my Bible study exercises that we do, I'm going to start charging you for them. That's it. I'm going to just start charging $100 for, for a live session where I do a Bible study exercise with you. Okay. Like, so go ahead and get that credit card out now. Go to theologycentral.net, hit the uh, donate tab, and we'll, we'll sign you up. I mean, that is crazy. Okay. So let's go through. We have all of them. So let's see what we have here. All right, there, I guess that's Jenna Winston, right? If that's her house, well, she's doing pretty good. That's all I can say. All right, here, okay, so a complete conversational e-course, spiritual-led freedom uh, is $59. Friendship with God is $129. Walking in freedom is $249. Cultivating deep intimacy with God is $129. Identifying your uh, and cultivating your spiritual gifts is $129. How to operate in spirit-led deliverance is $129. A, a lot. Now, some of them are only $19, uh, but there you have it. And when this one is $299. Wow. That is insane. That is insane. There's a video here. Let me see. If, if, does this video work? Let me see here. I'm going to click on this video. Okay, here. Or is it just a photo? That's a photo. I'm assuming that's her. Yeah, it's just a photo. Um, let's see here. What else we can find? Oh, wait. No, no. Here we go. Here's a video. Yeah, Jenna Winston. All right, so that's her. So, yes, she charges hundreds of dollars in some of these cases. So she's charging money for this. I guess, man, I am in the wrong line of work. I should have just said, hey, everyone, God has given me a special gift, and I can, I can help you out knowing what's going on in your life, and all you need to do is call and register now. And I'm, I, I, I have definitely done my Christianity so I, I wouldn't be sitting here in an empty sanctuary in the middle of nowhere, Texas, with a little podcast with very few listeners. I could be making money, some serious cash. I, 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 sometimes I think I'm dumb. All right. Let's finish the rest of this. Yeah. We're uncovering more. The, the, the further down the rabbit hole we go, the more we uncover. Maybe we move past the open theism, complete open theism. There's partial open theism being taught. She definitely, it sounds like, was ordained by Bethel. And I guess she moved to Los Angeles so that she could get some money, 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 money. But she's not doing it for financial reasons, of course. I'm not doing it for fine. That would be like me saying, hey, guys, I do my Bible study exercises, not for financial reasons. However, I'm going to place all of them behind the Patreon wall. And for your low, low support of $15 a month, you can get access to all of my Bible study exercises. 
I, I guess I, I could do that, but I'm not doing it for financial reasons. Let me, I want you to know that I'm not doing it for financial reasons. Hey, we hold these big conferences, but we're not doing it for financial reasons. But if you want to get in and hear your favorite preacher preach, it'll only be $200, but we're not doing it for financial reasons. Usually the second someone says they're not doing it for financial reasons, then they tell you the cost of what it's, what, what to do to get whatever they're offering. That's always money involved. The fact that that came out of my mouth was like, I felt like that was the rudest thing I've ever said in my life. And then he looked up and the shock value of why did I come here for freedom? And all I'm going to do is just, I'm the worthless piece of, you know, and it kind of brought him out of it enough. Right. Wow. Well, then all of a sudden the Lord tells me to tell him the, um, I, I have a, I did a podcast on it and I don't want to get into the whole story, but God got me in a vision of butts because he was telling me, I wanted to show you all of your, yeah, but I did this. Yeah, but I did that. Yeah, but it was a vision between me and God. It's actually really funny. It sounds morbid, but it's really funny. But I ended up, God told me to tell him that story and I did. God gave you a vision of butts, like the word butt. <laughs> like, like, I think I need some clarification there. Like, okay. And it was really funny and morbid. So I don't think it would be the word, but so God gave you a vision of actual butts. But like, what is going on here? Like, am I hearing this right? She just said it was kind of morbid that I, I don't think that would be the word, but it wouldn't be. <laughs> okay. We, I think we probably need to, no, no, we're not going to stop. We're going to let this finish because again, we don't want to rip anything out of its context. We're giving, the, we're giving them their full context where they can do whatever, say whatever they want to say. All right, here we go. It, and for some reason, I've never, I've told that story. I've preached that story. I've ministered that story in front of hundreds and thousands of people. And, but for some reason, for the first time ever, I actually said a very inappropriate word instead of, but, and all of a sudden he weeps absolutely starts weeping and broken and broken and all so i guess if you if you cuss if you cuss or say an inappropriate word it's not inappropriate when you're doing it in ministry so you know i guess for now on i need to drop some inappropriate words behind the pulpit and then i can get everyone's attention and then they'll start weeping so if you say something inappropriate is it inappropriate if good comes from it now, now we're getting to a kind of a relativistic way. So if I if I say something from the pulpit that's inappropriate, but the result is people's quote unquote, they start weeping and crying and get delivered, then it's the inappropriate excuse. So can I let, let you know, if I if I if I go to Vegas and sleep with a prostitute, if something if something good comes from that, is am I excused of the inappropriate behavior? Like how far can I take this? Or only just with bad words? Probably only with bad words. I, I don't know. It's just Again, it's just an interesting, there's a lot of interesting logical and philosophical implications of what's being said. All this stuff. And what I didn't know was that he had been falsely accused. He had been in prison, ended up getting released after 10 years and totally got rectified oh. for what had happened. Wow. But he became a Christian as soon as he had gotten into prison. And I do have permission to share this, this testimony. He got, um, became a Christian. And he said, you don't understand. That's literally when you're in prison, you're one step above the child molesters. Like you, he goes, and so prison was horrible. And then there was obviously an incident that was horrific and the, just the things that happened. And he had just, he'd been out about four or five years and it, it, he just could, it was like, he was still there and still wow. being completely violated. Wow. And wow. all of a sudden it comes out and God came in and just flooded his truth. And that person is now the chaplain at the prison and has been for three years. Oh, come on. Yeah. That's crazy. In a moment because of a cuss word. I That's guarantee wild. you, I'm going to get blown up for that. And I'm okay because no, I, it's not, you know, man. I will say this. We don't have time to go there theologically. Yeah. Paul cuss yeah. twice. I just, he actually I used Roman cuss words. So. Yeah. There's moments when, and, and passion and shock value that Paul even used it. I love that some people are responding right now. Like, um, this is so on topic right now. This is exactly what I need. This is what I'm praying for. Lucille Fincham from YouTube. I'd love to gift you with one of the classes you're saying right now, you don't have the finances, but this is really what you want. I want to gift you with one of the classes. So one of our team is going to reach out to you, Lucille Fincham and give you the class. Uh, for those of you who are wanting to know how to sign up for the class, just go to bowlsministries.com. We also have the link right here on Facebook and YouTube. 
I know many people right now, you need to have this as a tool in your belt that you can pull out in circumstances because right now people's fear over COVID, people's fear over finances, people's fear over government, a lot of the fear is getting energized by demonic strongholds. Yeah. And these strongholds may not even be about politics. It may be about something that happened when they were little. And Jesus gives you the eyes to see the lies so you can help bring the truth. Like we need to be in our families and our friendship yeah. structures, like active in our spiritual realm so we can know we're not just talking to somebody who watches CNN or Fox News every day. We're talking to somebody who's living in scarcity and fear or somebody who's who has an appointment right now over their life from the enemy that God's saying, I'm bringing a new appointment, which is my original covenant, my original desire to them. And we can't do that without having these tools developed. Mm -hmm. You may do it one off here and there because God loves you and because you might have a gift of deliverance, but you won't operate it in a way that's consistent and intelligent, spiritually intelligent, unless you get the tools that's why we're bringing this class to you. And I hope you guys really enjoy it. Jenna, thank you so much. Can you pray for everybody, whether they're coming Absolutely. to class or not, just that God would impart. Okay, there you have it. So, uh, and of course, they're going to gift it for somebody. So that means it, it costs. So these, cl- I don't know how much that class costs. You got to pay money. Uh, just, oh, just crazy. Hey, I can set you free from, deli- I, can, I can deliver you from your bondage, but you got to give me money. I mean, it's just, oh, it just makes me just want to throw things. But let's go back to the original clip because I think this is uh, important. Let's go back to be- uh, to uh, Reformation Charlotte. I'm going to, okay, hang on. My, uh, okay, no, we don't want that one. We don't want that one. Okay, here we go. This is the audio clip from Reformation Charlotte, where they took just a small couple of seconds from what we just heard. We listened to the whole thing. Let's go back to the original and see why. Now, maybe you are, maybe you didn't miss it, and I did. I, I'm just curious about why I missed it, because now I'm mad. Like, I should have caught it in part one, but I, I was so, because I, I'm going I'm to go, I'm going to do everything. I'm going to read everything that Reformation Charlotte has on their YouTube page, because I want you to see exactly um, what, okay, this is exactly, see, this is what happened. This is the, uh, the power of suggestion. If I, and I remember this from the eighties, during the eighties here in West Texas, it was like, you know, just think of the movie Footloose, but worse. Okay. And I'm going to tell you, there were towns in West Texas that there were rules against dancing. So I, you know, Footloose literally was a part of my childhood growing up here in West Texas. All right. So, but there was this big thing about, you know, rock music is evil and there's backward and, and there's messages that if you play the record ba- record backwards, you'll hear the message in a, in a forward way. Now, when you're playing the record forward, you're, that message is going to, in, into your subliminal consciousness. And so you're getting the message. So in other words, if the record supposedly backwards says smoke marijuana, when you play it forward, you don't hear the message with your you know, with your conscious mind, but your sublim- subliminal mind, it, you're, you're getting it, you're, you're getting it there in, in your subliminal consci- consciousness, I guess is the right way to say it. You're getting it there. So, so everyone started playing the records backwards where they would hold, hold these conferences in churches and they would have a big sound system on stage. And they're like, now this is what the message is here. Um, you know, worship Satan. And then they would play it. And of course you would hear what they told you was there because they just told you it was there. Now, if they didn't tell you, there's a good chance you may not hear it, but if they tell you it's there, it's the power of suggestion. So this is, remember, when we went through this, what we should have done is just listen to it without reading everything, but I wanted to tell you exactly where I got it from. So here is the page, all right? Let me tell you again, all right? They now have 2,800 views. So more and more people are going to Reformation Charlotte, seeing this, and they're getting the wrong, they're, they're getting the wrong idea, and that's not fair. Look, Jenna Winston just demonstrated complete major issues, right? So there's, pl- why not go after the truth? Don't accuse her of something that's not completely accurate. Here's the title of the, 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 the video. Again, Reformation Charlotte, you can find them on YouTube. Ordained Bethel Pastor says God doesn't know the exact future. Ordained Bethel pastor Jenna Winston says God doesn't know the exact future, subscribes to open theism heresy. Now, that's what they were said. Now, when we listened to it, but when we took the entire video, it became clear that maybe that's not accurate. Maybe that's not. And other defenders of her are saying that's not accurate. Let's, I'm going to go back here. We're going to listen to what, how, Reformation Charlotte, and let's see why. Now, maybe you heard it the first time, but I'm going to try to identify why I missed it. I think I missed it because of the power of suggestion of what I read. 
which really makes me angry at myself. All right. But I'm glad I look, I'm not, I'm not here to make myself look good. I'm here to try to find truth. So this is hopefully a lesson for all of us. All right. Hopefully my failure to hear it the first time will be a lesson to you and, and make sure that you always check sources, sources, verify, verify. All right, here we go. If you just turn around and Jesus is there, you can't see them anymore, right? <laughs> so you can't see them anymore. Yeah. And so when you, true deliverance is about, there are so many things that happen in our lives all the time that God never planned. Now, see, they just stopped the, they stopped the audio. So you don't get that flow. You're not getting the flow. So I'm not, I'm not making an excuse for myself, Right. Uh, because I mean, I I I feel good that I I have followed this all the way through in what almost two hours. Yeah, it's going to be over two hours of of investigation live on the air. So I'm I'm grateful that we're doing this. I mean, most podcasts don't do things this way. So, but you see, they just stopped it. So at first, you hear that, and you're like, "Whoa!" She just said things happen that God didn't plan. Okay, that's that's a big that's 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 a part of open theism. All right, so now. With their power of suggestion, they've already given me. Now they've already got me thinking. Well, okay, clearly they're right. Now let's let's see how they play the next part. God doesn't make bad things happen, but He will take the assaults from the enemy. Who He doesn't want us happy and full of life and walking in our identity. And we're all gifted. We're all yeah. called. We all have epic, you know, whatever. And so He doesn't know our exact future, but He doesn't know our exact future, but See how they immediately stopped it? He doesn't know our exact future. See, they didn't let it play through so that I could catch it, right? Because immediately they stop it. I'm like, oh, he just said, she just said he doesn't know our exact future. He, and I, they, if you, if you listen to the full quote, then, then it becomes a little clear. Now, I think they ultimately play the full quote, but at this point, it's already been broken down so much that now your mind is already like, oh boy, this is full blown open theism, right? Let, let's continue. He doesn't know our exact future. But okay, now, then they're showing on the screen there that basically this is open theism. So now they're reinforcing what they, what they think you've heard, all right? Now, and then, then they're going to come in and play, I think, the whole quote, and that's when I should have caught it. But originally, I only had that part. I didn't even know that there was another part at the end because once they started showing on the screen about open theism, I stopped because there was only like 20 seconds left. Um, but let's let's I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and hit play here because now on the screen, he doesn't just, know okay. our exact future, but he does know our callings. He does know our giftings and he's just going to hit you opposite all the time, you know, and we get stuck in blame and this and that and believing all of it to where we don't even know our identity. Right. So what does it look like instead of dissecting everything wrong with you? Now, please note when they came back and played the quote, they just took he doesn't know our exact future. So you didn't have the full flow. So that, that's why we missed it. That's why I missed it. I mean, obviously, they, when they come back in, they don't play the beginning part of the quote. They just break it right. He doesn't know our exact future. So that now the, 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 the what comes before that is she's talking about the enemy saying he, and then she seems to imply that he doesn't know our exact future. He knows our calling, et cetera, et cetera. And he hits us with the opposite. Well, God wouldn't be hitting us with the opposite of, of, uh, I, I think she has to be referring to Satan there. At least I, now that I'm thinking, I, I just, I think that's what she is saying. So I, I think maybe there's a, there's a little miss. I think that's being misapplied and that they're accusing her of some messed up things. Now, if you just listen to the whole video, there's some craziness going on. There's some craziness going on there. And then to make it even worse, she's claiming that she can, she can plug into the Holy Spirit basically tap into the Holy Spirit, know exactly what has you in bondage and she can set you free. But to learn how to do it, you've got to pay her hundreds of dollars. And uh, well, that is blasphemous and horrible because why would we have freely, we have received, freely we have received. So why would we not freely give? Freely I've received from God in ministry. Why would I not freely give to as many people as possible? Now, yes, people may choose to support you but you don't charge. It's like, again, people, people sometimes go to theologycentral.net and hit the donate tab and, and, and donate money, which goes directly into the church account. They, they freely choose to do that because guess what? 
Uh, last year, we did over 900 episodes uh, here for the Theology Central podcast, and we never place anything behind a paywall. Everything it will always be free, period. If I have to charge, then it's it's done. Now, yes, I understand that there could be situations where if I didn't have money, things could happen. I couldn't be able to do the podcast. I understand it because it costs lots of money to do everything that we do. But the thing is, is um, if you have to, if you have to have people pay to get your teaching and your ministry, there there is a major problem. And and I and I look, I was screaming about that. Even people who I I learned much from their ministry, like early on in the earlier days of the internet, where you had pastors placing their sermons online and charging you a dollar or two dollars to download the sermon. I condemned that then. I condemn that now. All right, because that is wrong. All right. Wow. What a fascinating couple of hours here. You can email me your thoughts about all of this. If you hear that quote differently than I am, I think if you put it all together, clearly she is to me indicating the enemy does not know our exact future. He knows our calling, et cetera, et cetera. And then he hits us with the opposite. Well, if he are calling and all of that and hitting us with the opposite clearly has to be referring to to Satan. It it just doesn't make, it doesn't make any sense, but uh, you can, you can tell me what you think. And uh, please do email me newsif at yahoo.com. I'll end with this. The most valuable lesson we've learned from all of this is this. I don't care what it is. I don't care if you hear someone saying something about Joe Biden, the vice president. I don't care what it is. If someone's saying something about COVID, your job and first of all, is to always go find the truth and make sure you never say something that you have not found out is true. You, We have to speak the truth and we got to make sure we're accurate. And I think Reformation Charlotte here is not accurately presenting that. And that's why you don't rip things out of context. That's why when I review, I try to always review the entire audio. And yeah, it takes lots of time, but we can protect ourselves from uh, wrong accusations. But man, there's enough going on there. That's, a, that's an absolute train wreck. But we'll make it very clear, though. There's still some open theism being thrown in there. All right. Things happen in your life that God didn't plan. You're, you're, you're getting into an open theistic mindset. All right. And then even if you try to imply that God does know everything, well, then you have to go back and try to modify your first claim that things happen in your life that God didn't plan. Because if they happened and God didn't plan them, why didn't he stop them? If he didn't stop them and he allowed them, then are they not part of his plan? So, so there's still a million theological issues with all of this. And she is, it, it appears, according to her, she was ordained by Bill and Chris, which I think are referring to Bill Johnson and Chris, and I can't remember his last name, from Bethel Church. So I think there is a clear possible connection to Bethel in the midst of all of that as well, which would lead me to be, it'd be interesting to know what, how Bethel Church handles open theism or not in, in any way, shape, or form. So, all right, we'll stop right there. Email me, newsif at yahoo.com. Everyone have a great evening. God bless.